we will always find new ways of interpreting the same images. And we will always find new things within the cards. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Anna from Astro Lady Tarot. Today I am doing a very impromptu, unasked for VR to Natalia Roboros, now known as Tarot Shrink, on TikTok, I think. I don't have TikTok, Instagram, and now also YouTube. I'm very thankful that she is back making at least a few videos for us to ponder and think about and talk about. So, little side note before the intro, um, which I know Sylvain must love. I realized that the proper way to say it is probably unasked VR, but I don't, I'm not sure now looking back if back in the day when I came up with this term unasked for VR, it just sounded right or it was actually a joke thinking that sounds like uncalled for, you know, like being a little bit controversial maybe with my opinions here and there and then doing things that are uncalled for. Obviously, I don't want to do videos, make videos that are uncalled for or say things that were uncalled for. <laughs> I know what that means. It's negative. It's not, you know, very friendly, but um, unasked for. It just, I don't know. It sounds right. It feels right. So anyway, let's get into it. It is the morning on my day off. I am having a wonderful week so far, even though stuff is happening and it's very confusing but and stressful. But I mean, work-wise this week, at least me giving my classes, because I'm a dance teacher in case you don't know, and a tarot reader, <laughs> they're going really well. I feel the appreciation of the students. I freaking love them and I don't know, just felt like saying it. And it's beautiful weather here in Amsterdam. It's sunny and I can see through my clear windows finally. Yeah, feels right. Anyway, I am here to respond to a video to Natalia. How many decks to have and depth here discussion. Now, I try to not repeat myself too much in my videos on my channel. I've I talked a lot about culling tarot decks and tarot collecting and um, yeah, the, the depth year. Now, ever since depth year came into our tarot community, community online, it's been really helpful for me because actually I realized it was something that I needed that I didn't know really how to do for myself. And now there's finally a term for it. Now, it was never for me a no buy year. It was rather a low buy year. I got four decks in a year. I think ever since I started doing depth year, I kind of started and never stopped, you know? Although I know that this year, <clears throat> I'm probably already at four decks in May, but I don't even know. But this year I'm allowing to fall in love with the tarot deck, like love at first sight, like with the ritual tarot that I have over there. That was a love at first sight. And so I'm allowing that, you know, it feels luxurious. It feels, it feels like it came in, into my life for a reason somehow. I'll talk about it in future videos. So I'm allowing more this year. But the reason for me to do a depth year regarding tarot decks, actually, because that was the only thing that I truly focused on. Um, and of course, reading the books that I have. It was never so much about any financial issue necessarily, although I'm not a rich person. I don't think I'll ever be, but that's also kind of fine with me. <laughs> but it was actually about finding a way to cope with this feeling that I had without looking outside at the tarot community outside of myself at the tarot community with all those deck unboxings, deck reviews and all of that, all, every a new deck every other second, probably more actually, to be honest. What I'm trying to say is that it wasn't so much about fear of missing out or it wasn't so much about a type of desire for new tarot decks, new imagery all the time, the newest thing. I never really had that anyway. I will always prefer my very first one, you know? I've always been this way, unless obviously I'm completely blown away. And it wasn't so much about being tempted 
necessarily. I know that for a lot of people that's what it was and that was for sure a factor for me. Obviously we are tempted looking at all these beautiful new tarot decks. You're like, yes, that's the one. We always searching for the new one or a tarot deck that will somehow change your life, somehow change your perspective on something, somehow make your life much better. A tarot deck cannot really do that for you though. It's always about, I mean, we know that, right? It's always about the reflection that you find within yourself. What I truly felt though is a type of overwhelm, tarot overwhelm. I feel with having too many decks, too many decks, I don't put a number on it, okay? But right now, 30 decks, or actually a little less than 30, including Oracle, is perfect, actually. But they have to be the right kind, and I kind of have to love them all, and have a purpose for them all, and at least read with all of them. Be able to read them. That was very important as well. Because, <laughs> you know, I just need my tarot decks to be more than just pretty pictures. So with so many decks these days, I mean, there are bound to be quite a few coming out just pretty, you know, nothing esoteric or, or, or even, I don't know, interesting about them, in my opinion. But I'm not naming anything, you know, I don't even have a specific thing in mind, though. <laughs> so anyway, that's a little bit, I hope I was clear, still the morning. That's a little bit of my story regarding depth here and then decluttering. The decluttering that was, so, or actually tarot culling, was so good because it allowed me, or it kind of actually forced me to focus on what do I need. First of all, knowing about myself, that I function better, that I have a better relation, just overall better, <clears throat> better relationship with my decks, not having so many of them. So it means that what was truly important for me was that I know my tarot decks. Now that might actually be a little bit hypocritical maybe um, of myself because I pulled out the Tantric Dakini Oracle, formerly known as the Secret Dakini Oracle. They didn't change a thing except for the font and, well, the beautiful white borders on the back. <laughs> um, I mean, I know I love this. I know my mind has been blown by this deck multiple times. I just know that I will get back to it and I will reread the guidebook because I remember some really good, beautiful passages. I mean, it was, it's such a, actually rather fiery deck. The book, I remember some passages reminded me of the Book of Toth or maybe vice versa. I don't remember which one I read first. It was very Crowley-esque type of, not in the negative way, but rather in the positive way, how passionately written it was. And I really like this old school collage type art. And it's very evocative. And I like that it's an intuitive deck because there is the tarot structure minus the quartz. But at the same time, it's an oracle. I think the name Secret Dakini Oracle is correct. It it's not a tarot deck. I don't know why I'm actually showing you this. It's not about making excuses for having more decks than I need. I mean, I talked about this multiple times, but you can watch also my main decks and mood decks video that I will link, because in there I feel I explain it well, what I need. I know my main decks. I know the ones that I can mentally flip through. Those are the ones I have a deep connection with. Those are the ones that make sense to me. Those are the ones that I can always read and interpret and something good comes out of it. And it's a deep relationship. We kind of have a pact together. And then I have my mood decks, which is all my other tarot decks in my collection, which I allow in and that actually feels really good to do. So you know what I mean? I know why I have the decks that I own. There is one thing that I don't agree with, with Natalia, what she said, is that I, I personally don't tend to do predictive readings. She's saying in that video, if I remember correctly, if you want to do predictive readings, all you truly need is one tarot deck. Fine. But 
Then, if you want to do more psychological readings, as in tarot for self-knowledge, then she suggests, please get, well, I mean, she's not saying like, please get as many tarot ducks as you can possibly <laughs> get your hands on, but then she prefers a rather larger tarot collection, more than one at least, because her reasoning, I understand it, is you get different images, and so your mind is directed in different places, and every tarot deck has a different language. I agree with that, but I'm here to give another view on this matter, because I'm speaking from experience, right? I'm a tarot reader, I started years ago for myself, then started reading for other people, and now it's actually my second job, you know, I'm a tarot reader, and I absolutely love it. But my main practice with tarot is without a doubt tarot for self-knowledge, psychological, shadow work. And I know Natalia isn't a fan of that particular term because it's Colium's shadow, not shadow work, but I also made an entire video on that, so if you want to see it, just to get to know me a little bit in case this is your first video. <laughs> but I can tell you that for inner work, so psychological tarot readings, for me, what works well, it's not about getting more imagery, meaning going wide, looking out, and then hopefully getting something new out of it, learning something from it. I get it. I get this stance, right? I get this, this opinion and this thought and where it came from. But from my own experience, it works much better, and this can differ, of course, between you and me. It works much better to have a core deck. So like the one that I know best is um, the Patrick Valenza um, Swing of Fidela Luna, paradoxical one. But then I also have the Rider Waite Smith Centennial. I also have the Toth deck. So these three main systems, having less tarot decks, so having that core, which you know inside and out, that is where you go in depth because you get so much out of knowing your deck and having that confidence when reading, when interpreting the cards, when interpreting a spread. You get that trust, actually. And the thing is, my entire point of this video is, yes, you can get different messages from as many images as you want. You can interpret whatever you like, not just tarot cards, you know. But the meaning of a card, remember this, the meaning of a card changes as you change, okay? Yes, there's a system to the tarot. Yes, there's an actual book meaning, although every book will give a slightly different approach to what the card actually means. But the hermit today can mean something different for me tomorrow. Not like way out there and it means whatever. No, the cards have a core meaning, that's true but it's a spectrum that you can always switch. And is it an affirmation? Is it advice? Is it read in shadow? So is this something that you have to work on? Or is it stuck maybe? Is it actually something that's in light? So you're doing really well, keep going. You know what I mean? Like it can mean in context already in tarot spreads, so many different things. The fact is we will always, no matter how well you think you know, your tarot decks. We will always find new ways of interpreting the same images, and we will always find new things within the cards. Even if we can mentally flip through the deck, even if we only have one deck in our entire lives, we never touched or saw another tarot deck, we can always discover different details, new details in the cards, or look at it differently, in a, in a different light even, I don't know and find new meanings. So that is extremely, in my opinion, extremely valuable. And how is that not, I don't want to say the best way, but an incredible way to work on yourself using tarot? 
because you actually actively digging into yourself. You're actually actively going in depth. So you're deepening your knowledge of the tarot. You're deepening your knowledge of the very specific deck or very specific decks that you have in your hands rather than going wide. I think I made my point. I think this was what I came on here to say. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, I really, really want to know on which side you feel is most true for you. Absolutely fine if you completely disagree with what I just said. I'm just sharing for the people who don't have channels and feel this way. And it's it's an honest opinion from my own experience as a tarot reader. The fact that I use tarot mostly for psychological purposes, you could say. I want to know, where do you stand? Are you comfortable with your current tarot collection? Because I know I am, although I am actually trying to cull some tarot decks, as always it seems, but I know why I'm doing it, you know. The main thing isn't because I feel like I cannot have that many tarot decks and I feel guilty or whatever. It's not about that. It's really about noticing that I function better having less decks and knowing my tarot decks. And if I don't know them yet, all that well, then I can just get to know them and actually get to know them because I don't have that many. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's really that simple. If I feel a deck doesn't work anymore or I never pick it up, I get rid of it. And one last thing, if I acquire a new deck, it's most of the time because I feel it fills a gap in my collection. It's not as if I think this deck is going to change my life or change my approach to tarot. It just means I get something really different from this imagery than I get from the decks that I currently own. But I must admit, this is a little bit faulty and like on the edge of what I explained earlier in the video because I know that I don't actually need new images to get more meaning. I can just come back to my main decks anytime I want and every time get new meanings and insights from the very same images. Because don't forget, it's not just 78 pictures. Most of the time we make tarot spreads, right? Even if it's just three cards that you pull every day for yourself, they will always almost always be placed differently, be in a different order. If you read reversals, yes or no, what the tarot spread position means, you know what I mean? So there is already an endless amount of possibilities with just one deck. Okay, that's what I came on here to say. I want to thank you so much for being here and I'll see you in the next one. Oh yeah, and thanks for the video, Natalia. I appreciated it. Mm -hmm.